Welcome. This is 49E8 and this is point charges, electric fields and the superposition principle. We mentioned the superposition principle before with electric forces. Now we're going to think about it with electric, uh, electric fields. Uh, so let's look at our slide and what we're saying here is uh, at any point P. So now we don't have a charge here, we just have a point in space. Uh, the total electric field due to the group of point charges equals the vector sum of the electric fields of the individual caused by the individual charges. So our total electric field equals our um, sum of the electric fields individually and so it's the sum of these guys individually. If I look at my diagram I can see uh, electric field is the direction that a positive charge would go and so this must be a negative and this guy must be a negative because a positive charge will be attracted to a negative that must be a negative and this must be a positive just a little you know it's good to follow through the visualization here's an example so a 4 coulomb positive charge is at oh, minus 8, zero, 0, Let's try and draw this. So that's minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8. So this is minus 8. And I have 4 positive. And then I have a minus 5 charge. Is at minus 4, minus 3? Oh, minus 4, minus 3. So here I have a second charge and this is at minus 5. So the first charge plus 4 is at minus 8, zero, zero. And my second charge minus 5 coulombs is at minus 4, minus 3, 0 and write an expression for the electric field at the origin. So there's my point of interest and I want my electric field at the origin and if I was to put a positive charge there it would feel a repulsion from this guy and it would feel an attraction towards that guy. Let's do those in two different colors so you can see where they uh, is that a different color there so we can visualize it those are my two e's i have an e for that guy and an e for that guy do you see where the directions come from and then i know let's call this e1 so e1 is equal to well it's going to be k e Q over R squared times R hat which equals KE 4 remember don't worry about the sign on it over R squared that's going to be 8 squared because that is 8 and then times R hat now, R hat, I want a unit vector going in that direction. So I'm going to say 1i plus 0j plus 0k. So I have a magnitude, which is keq over R squared. I know my ke. I know my q for this first one is plus 4, or 4. And then the R squared, well, I know the R is 8, so I've got to square that. Then the direction, I visualize a unit vector pointing in the direction. I want it to point, I want it to point horizontally. And the unit vector for that is 1i plus 0j plus 0k, because that is a unit vector pointing in the positive direction along the x-axis. Okay, so now let's have a, a look at the next one. Let's call this E2. So E2 
is equal to and for E2 I have well it's going to be K E Q over R squared let's call it R2 and R hat 2 so they recognize they're different and it's going to be K E and I look back at my diagram and this is 5 minus 5 but I've taken care of the minus by the direction of the electric field arrow it's just the magnitude so we call it 5 over now I need to find the distance from my point to the charge and it's a triangle isn't it and it's going to be 4 horizontally it's 4 horizontally and it's 3 vertically well, and this forms a triangle and if you've been around triangles much you know that this is a for a right angle triangle this is a 3 4 5 triangle if that doesn't occur to you then you can say that C C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared C squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared which equals 25 so C is equal to the square root of 25 which for us is 5 oh so this distance here is 5 5 squared and then so this is magnitude and now I need a unit vector pointing in this direction well if I said that it was minus 4i minus 3j plus 0k I would have the right line it is in the right line and it is actually in the correct direction along that line I want it to go from the origin down to the bottom left that's what this guy does but it's too long and so I want to divide it by its own magnitude and I just worked out its magnitude is 5 so divided by 5 so let's clean up uh, uh, well let's 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 clean up second so I'm gonna say well e total is equal to e1 plus e2 and so e total would equal uh, that's 4 over 88 to 64 ke 1i plus 0 j plus 0 k added to because we're adding these vectors together and then this would be 5 over 25 ke and I could go minus 4i minus 3j plus 0k over 5. Now, now, can you see there's a whole bunch of different paths I can take for the simplification from here. I want to leave it, I want to do it relatively quickly. So this is going to be 1 over 24. K E one I plus zero J plus zero K added two. And this is actually going to be five and that five cancels one over twenty five K E minus four I minus three J plus zero K. And can you see how I could multiply the one over twenty four into these numbers and I could multiply the 1 over 25 into these numbers and then I'd have an I value in two bits which I can add together and a J value in two bits which I can add together and then a K value in two bits I can add together and I'll get a final answer the problem with that is by the time you've done all those steps if you made a slip I wouldn't be able to see what you had done so under circumstances like this, I'd like you just to leave it. It's going to be Newton's per Coulomb.
in its uh, um, undivided form, just just showing the workings of it. In, in many questions I say write an expression and that's what I did here, write an expression. It means you don't have to take it to the final set of numbers, just show me what you're doing and I can tell if you know what you're doing. So there we have it.